Nope. You guys, we have the wonderful Erin Rogers on Hot Mess Espresso today. Hi, Erin. Hi. I'm so excited to be here, Heather. I'm so excited to have you on. Yay. So for the sake of just, I, I don't really like sugar coat anything or anything like this. So let's just dive into it. What's been, what's been your journey? What, what got you here? Uh, I would say fucking up a lot. <laughs> Ooh, girl, same, girl, same. <laughs> Uh, that. <laughs> yeah, I would say, yeah, just trying a lot of things, having them not work out and learning lessons I wasn't expecting, which took me to the place that like is ideal for me. I feel sort of like uh, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, but with a lot more like performing in stinky basements. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. sounds about right. Yeah, I a mean, lot of I'm bars, <laughs> a lot of bars. I'm I'm a metalhead, so like sticky basements is where yeah. like, a lot of bands got there. Is somebody's house that had a big enough basement? They had like their little shows or whatever. Yeah, it good time. It's a, it's a weird <laughs> thing as like an adult human to occasionally go into a place that smells really bad and just be like, ah, uh, memories. Literally, oh, yeah. yeah, the nostalgia of this is awful, but the nostalgia. Yeah, well, that's the thing is like. You know, uh, I write stories about my life that's and help other people work on stories about their lives. Uh, and sometimes I think how nice it would be to be, I can't even remember his name because I'm not fancy, but the guy who like contemplated like a fancy French cookie. And meanwhile, I'm like, oh, a bar that smells like feet. Ah, oh, that takes me back. Oh my god! <laughs> but honestly, though, like it's it's amazing how smells can just like trigger one hundred percent something. But so, like your mental health journey, obviously, like we're gonna get into your storytelling and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But like, how did you even get into all of that? Well, with uh, storytelling, I kind of uh, stumbled into it. I will say my origin story for that is I was doing a lot of comedy at the time. Uh, I was doing stand up. I was doing sketch. I basically was so desperate to be good at comedy because I love it so much that I was like, I'll do anything. What is the thing? Like, I'll do right. it and I'll try so hard and I won't be that, you know, the way that I, like, I could be funny, but I could never be at, at that level, uh, which might have been like a cue to mental health stuff I should have listened to more closely. But that aside, uh, I was at that time in an improv troupe with uh, 10 women. And uh, despite the fact that I was doing improv, I still had like a little like, yeah, you know, I'm like very cool. Like I had this idea of myself as this outsider. It's incredibly cringy to think about. Like uh, but let's keep we going. Were cool doing improv. I'm yeah. pretty sure the whole point of improv is to be not cool. Exactly. Exactly. But I was like, whatever. You know, I'm a stand up. I'm an improviser. And my friend was doing the storytelling show and she invited me. And I was like, I'm a very good supportive friend. So I will go. And I was like, I'll be at the back because this thing for nerds. And I remind everyone I was in improv. Right. Anyways, this thing for like nerds who like want to talk about their feelings or whatever. I'll be in the back. And as soon as she's gone on, I will sneak out the back. And I literally was sitting there with my jacket like on one shoulder just so I could like quietly sneak out, which is like, you could just leave a place. I thought I was like a, the worst James Bond in the world. My, my anxiety could never, I can't just leave a place. I have to literally like, yeah, 007 it out of there. Yeah. I think that was my like cosplay of a jacket on one shoulder. Um, yeah. So anyways, yes, James Bond, uh, but like in something from uh, value village anyways, or I think it's savers over there. Um, but uh, my local, yeah, my local like secondhand places at various times have known me by first name. That's how classy I am. Anyways, okay, we love it. that aside, I'm at the back. Someone comes up and tell us, tells a story. And as soon as they start talking, it was like, like a heavenly light. Came, like in a movie where it was like, ah, like I was just like, yeah, like the, oh, this. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, it could be this. It could be funny. It could be sad. Like I literally at one point during the show, because I stayed for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like touching my face. I'm like, am I crying? Like what's happening? Because when I was not particularly in touch with my feelings, very shocking for someone in comedy, but I was not in touch with my feelings and I was basically like feelings blah. Uh, and it was funny and it was sweet and it was beautiful and it was all I talked about for about two weeks which was really fun for everyone else I'm sure <laughs> yeah exactly and then I was like well wait a second 
I could do this. So I started a show called Awkward that was a specifically comedic show Mm -hmm. that was all about um, embarrassing stories. And I'm very proud of that show. But it's also very funny because, like, that was my, like, safe way of getting into emotions because I was like, whatever. It's not about real emotions. It's about embarrassing stories. Exactly. Yeah, it was my gateway drug is what it was. Yeah. And so I did that. And then I got more and more involved with the community and I met all these incredible people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still uh, am a comedic writer. But with this, I can do both. And so... With my shows, I started working with people because I had a lot of people. I've had a couple of different stage shows who were like, I would love to do this, but I'm too scared to be on stage. I was like, well, I will work with you with your story. And then suddenly I was a storytelling coach and I was good. Like I wasn't, I was all right at first, but like anything else, the best way to get good at something is just do it. Especially because I desperately wanted to be good because I didn't want to send people on stage and have them not feel comfortable. Uh, and I want to say it's cause I'm such a good person, but it's also cause I didn't want them to like bomb. Uh, cause right. it would look bad on me, but also I'm a, ve- I'm a very good person. I would like that. If that could be a note in the show, Aaron Rodgers is a very good person. <laughs> I, that would be wonderful. I, I don't think anything, anyone thinks differently of you at all with that. Yeah. Can you tell I have anxiety? Um, <laughs> just a little, just a little yeah. like, hi over here. Exactly. I'm the, I'm the adhd or that when you were sitting there, like, am I crying? I literally immediately, like, my brain just, like, shut off for half a second because yeah. I was just thinking of a very Potter musical. Yeah. When Draco Malfoy's like, am I, be- am I bleeding? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It was, like, yes. the same tone that, I, yes. that I'm that i sure. Yeah. I so. feel like a lot of people, because uh, I have ADHD uh, that's been diagnosed and uh, uh, I'm autistic, which has not mm. been diagnosed uh, except for the because I don't need medication for it. And that's the right. reason I got diagnosed for ADHD, because now I can concentrate on things. But right. with the autism, once I started reading about it, I was like, oh, my God, I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm no. not. Yeah. Oh, that was another thing where it was like, la, da, da. like, I was just like, oh, oh when my God. When you get the diagnosis, you're just sitting there and you're like, you're like reading it and you're just like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. When I started, <laughs> when I started reading different things, uh, occasionally I had to like take a little bit of a walk because it felt a little bit like that nightmare where you're like in your underpants in front of everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but the everyone is like all of the versions of myself that have been like, what's wrong with me? And it's like, nothing, nothing's wrong with me. No, it's just, it's your brain. Yeah. It's just different. Um, but yeah, storytelling. So I don't want to brag. I've done a lot of therapy. I don't want to okay, brag. Look, I'm, I'm yeah. like seven years, seven years strong over here in May. Yeah. So I, I just, I love, well, I say I love therapy. Uh, I always love therapy up until five minutes before it. That I'm like, why would I do this to myself? Or when I get off the the call and I'm just like, I should feel better, but like actually yeah. now I'm like a little pissed off about something that we just unpacked. Like, what the right? Fuck? But you know, they say if you're friends with somebody for seven years, it's like a thing for life. So once I hit my seven year anniversary of therapy, I guess I'm in therapy for life. It's fine. I it's love just, it. It is literally the most consistent relationship I've had next to my sister like yeah it's, it's all good well, yeah it's friend, it but, is yeah. <laughs> it is wonderful and it is it's nice to have a space where I could just like be a mess uh oh, yeah. which is very funny because you know I think there's a lot of people who've known me over the years and be like you know you've been a mess various times I know yeah no we we all know that I've been a mess and I'm like I'm mm. a mess and my friends will just be like well that's literally your podcast name and I'm like exactly exactly isn't that the great thing about these kind of things that was one of the things that attracted me to comedy was that like these things weren't feelings they were you know just fuel for comedy right. uh, which is a great tool to have like it's I just sure like as yeah. hell maybe traumatized AF but shit at least I'm funny exactly it's all uh to oh my goodness i'm gonna forget her name uh which is hilarious because she's a hero of mine but uh everything nora efron everything is copy once you start being able to make everything copy uh i at least personally 
uh, it will, it just makes life easier. I don't know about any, for partners of mine, if it has been where I'm like, let me tell you, let me tell an audience all kinds of stuff. But for myself, real gift. Yeah, it's it's wonderful when you can yeah. actually, and, and it's it's just a form of art. It's a form yeah. of expression. For sure, for sure. So uh, I had done a lot of therapy, but, uh, and and I, not even but, all of that was very helpful. And it got me to the place that I could start seeing myself realistically and I could start making good choices and I could start mm -hmm. really being on the path that brought me so many wonderful things in my life. But storytelling, once I started telling stories about my life and either being on stage or seeing it on the page and just being like, oh, this is, why have I been carrying this around in this way? Why is this experience from when I was nine years old still haunting me when, I, when I'm when i sure no one else remembers it? And so one, I could be empowered with making it funny. And mm -hmm. two, I can just have it live in a place, which is it lives in a notebook and it's not staying in my head anymore. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a lot better than telling what you think is a funny, like anecdotal oh. uh, thing at like a party and everybody's staring at you like, that's awful. And you're like, yeah, it is. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And it's never a party where you're like really close to home. So you, I always end up right. having to be on like two buses on the way home, just being like, oh, no. No, I'm that person though. I'm like, if I meet you at a party, I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, what your favorite band is like, cool, but let's like take a couple shots and trauma dump on each other so we can yeah. know each other. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it's fine. Yes. Well, that's the thing. That's why I think I work better at queer parties where it's just like that's, you know, that's, I, yeah. it's very funny. I had a I had a party at my house years ago, because uh, I don't like living by myself, uh, because then I'm convinced there's ghosts. Oh, see, I welcome the ghosts. I'm over Good here. for you. Like, I'm scared. As long as like you're not throwing things at me in the middle of the night, like you can just chill. Like it's fine. Yeah. I, I am the very opposite of Ray Parker Jr. It, because I am afraid of all ghosts. Um, cat. Ghosts don't like cats. There we go. There we go. And there I we go. Them, so I'm pretty sure the fantastic. going bump in the night are actually my cat's up at 3 a.m. and not a ghost. Actually. That's fantastic. Well, there we go. Sorry, roommate. You're out. Uh, yeah, but... Just get a cat. It's fine. They, oh. they, they ward them off. Salt them yeah. on your windowsills and get a cat. You're good fantastic <laughs> well there we go but did my life just change forever possibly i, I think i you know I'm, i love it I'm changing lives over here one like salt shake at a time fantastic fantastic <laughs> you just became a life coach i love it um <laughs> yes <Yikes. laughs> take my advice thank you <laughs> i can't even take my own advice like i will I, I, say I no i do give great advice yes just, don't follow it myself that well that's but that's so many of us right you can give great advice yeah. for everyone else that's why i think there should be like opposite life coaches where yeah it's just like either they give advice and don't follow it or you hear the hear what they say you do the opposite i would probably be a very good opposite life coach to yeah i feel like i want that like teenage energy where i'm like you don't know me like, I want to, like, you're not my real dad life coach. Oh, my God. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. And it would be, like, just, it just yeah. Be like, oh, well, what if you, you know, do this thing? I'm like, I'll do the, uh, what if you just eat, uh, you know, a lot of food that, like, just saps your energy instead of eating greens? I was like, I'll show you. I'm just going to eat spinach every day. Literally. That'll show you. Anyways. Um, but, uh, so, years ago, uh, uh, I had a party and my roommates invited some people and at one point I went into the kitchen and there was just a circle of uh, women and non uh, non guys uh, sharing uh, rape trauma, which is like, I'm glad there's a space for people to do that, but also yeah. it's a party. Yeah, that's, so that's quite the dump. Yeah, so that is that's the thing. It's just finding the balance between the like, hey, let's talk a little trauma. Like, I think my vibe is like a little bit of trauma, a little trauma. Yeah, we'll just we'll just sprinkle it on the top. Yeah, that's my rap name is little trauma. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yes, uh, I will. I, and, and I promise, my 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 promise to everyone is, I will never attempt to rap. That oh, is yeah, that no. is my goal. I will just no. go up there and I'll listen to you. Like there'll just be beats and I'll listen mm -hmm. to you, little trauma. Yeah. 
Yep. I, I'm literally, if it is not in my car with Eminem on at full blast, yeah. like you're not, you're never going to hear it. And that's if very there are funny. Other people in my car, I'm just like, yeah, I grew up on this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, 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 it's just oh, not my thing. Goodness. So with storytelling, mm-hmm. um, we had talked a little bit off Yes. Off the record. Mm-hmm. Like, off this record. <laughs> that makes it sound, like, very exciting. I'm saucy. I, like, I love we, it. We talked off the record. Yeah. Um, it's, like, an exclusive. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I had kind of asked uh, what the difference is between what you do with storytelling and mm. the things that are kind of going up viral on TikTok, like the more spoken word poetry storytelling. So Mm. what is the difference between what we're seeing on a lot of like open mic nights or like poetry slams and stuff like Mm -hmm. that and straight up storytelling? Because I I guess they're one and the same, but they're also different. So yes. Well, I will say educate my ass over here. (laughs) I love that. That is one of your segments. Educate my ass with Heather. Um, (laughs) It could be it could it could be sponsored by Depends or some sort of Metamucil. It'd be great. To, yes, always be pitching. Anyways, sorry. Uh, I have ADHD. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, same. Yes, <laughs> there we go. Stay on track at all. And I'm exactly. Here I love it. So, to me, uh, storytelling and spoken word, there's a lot of similarities. Mm-hmm. But uh, spoken word, word and poetry, like, you don't have to have a beginning, a middle, and end that flows that the audience can stay with. You can kind of take more... Uh, chances and do some different things you know they both have a focus on words both both and like how to use words to communicate which I mean sounds obvious except for the fact when you realize that the difference between uh, one synonym and another you can spend two hours being like what gets the idea across uh, which is I love it's one of the reasons I love talking to spoken word artists because I'm like you get it um, yep But to me, storytelling is about showing change. So it's something with a beginning, middle, and end, and uh, the person telling the story or the story, what the person who the story is about, they go through a change. Now, it could be a change of mood. It doesn't have to be, you know, I, uh, like, jumped out of an airplane. In fact, a lot of the best stories are small, but... Uh, to me, it the difference is having a clear beginning, middle, and end, and uh, having uh, a change that you experience with the character, and right. it really being about a particular character. It's uh, usually yourself. That was one of your cats fighting a ghost. I'm assuming. Um, no, that was actually <laughs> dog. There you go. The I dog. love it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a zoo here. I love so. it. But what was one of your favorite stories to do? Uh, I will say uh, f- one of my favorite stories, I did a solo show called Tough that was about me trying to be a tougher person, which is very funny because I'm basically like a marshmallow with feet. Like I'm just, I'm the squishiest, wussiest person. And so I did, I, you know, I, I did things like I, I took a burlesque class. I, there was all these things I tried. I went on uh, various dates. So uh, I came out as queer uh, uh, almost 10 years ago, and uh, it was a surprise to no one but me. Um, but I. Yeah, you know, when I came out as bi, my sister literally was like, Why did you have a. <laughs> I'm going to sell this dog. I swear. Yeah, your, do- your dog's an ally. Yeah, she, she is. Yeah, she is yeah. here for it. Exactly. Um, no, when I came when I came out, um, my sister was like, "Wait, why did you make a Facebook post?" And I yeah. was like, "Because the family doesn't know." Yeah. And she's like, "Oh yeah, yeah." yeah we always figured that about you, but that's you know, very I'm funny. Just like, I'm over here, like, I'm so glad this wasn't a shock to everyone. I yeah. grappled with it for like five years, but yeah. I'm glad that you're just like, well, yeah, duh. Yeah. Okay. That's been so much of my life has been like, wait, what? Um, yeah. I feel like. One of my theories is that almost everyone has like a core thing to their life that could be one sentence. And mine is, wait, what? Uh, Because so many things in my life, either everyone knew and I just figured it out or just one day I was like, oh, my God, you know, I should be in storytelling. Like it's that, you know, heaven light thing happens to me. And I get semi-regularly. I'm like, what's the next thing? Like, can I fly? Like, what's the thing I haven't figured out yet? 
but I didn't know I was bisexual. Uh, I had gone on many dates with women uh, that I did not know were dates uh, because that is also a thing. Sometimes even when you both know uh, that you're queer, sometimes you're not sure if it's a date. But anyways, I, uh, I realized that about myself, but I was an adult, am an adult. Uh, theoretically. And I was like, I don't know how to date women. So one day, very late at night, uh, I posted, there were, there used to be something in Toronto called Buns, B-U-N-Z, which was, it started on Facebook. It was people trading stuff without any money involved. So it was someone that's like, I need a can of, of uh, tomatoes uh, and I have some noodles. We'll switch. And right. it became more and more of a thing. And then there were also a bunch of different trades people did. And so in that group, uh, I posted, uh, I would like to take you on a date. I'm not expecting anything. I will pay for the dinner or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. I just am going to be weird and awkward. And so that's all, that's all I ask is you just deal with the fact that I'm going to be like, oh, oh, oh. and I, I closed my computer and then I went to sleep and then I woke up, ooh, four to six hours later with a start going just like oh my god what have i done yeah i i, I would be like wait no can we delete that like no, yeah that, right yeah and there were just the all I these need. exactly and there was all these supportive messages because of course uh queers mm -hmm. uh very kind all these supportive messages and so yeah talking about trying to be a tougher person that i think is my favorite and it's a, a several stories put together but honestly, I think the one, and I don't want to say favorite uh, or like most fun because it was tough uh, for me to put together. It was tough. Hey, hey. Uh, for me to put together. But uh, I put uh, myself and uh, my friend Jeremy have a collective where we put out storytelling collections of all kinds of different people's stories from all around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always get a story in it because, you know, that's part of the benefit of doing all this is you get yeah, published like yourself. It. Yeah. It's, you know, why not? Why? Why do all that work? If not. Right. And I've liked my other stories. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote a version of it and I was like, great. And it goes. And then I started reading the other stories. Uh, one in particular. Um, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm bullshitting. I'm not being as honest as the people that I am working with are. I am keeping people at an emotional distance. And the thing is, if you read the two versions, you might not notice it, but I felt it. And as soon as I read yeah. that story, I was like, oh, I can't do that. If this person is like brave enough and honest enough to let you in emotionally in the way that I'm telling her and everyone to be what right do i have well i mean i could do whatever i want but i was just like i can't do this and so i went and rewrote it and the thing is it's not it's it's not a story about like my deepest trauma it is a it's it's a story about really keeping people at emotional distance and like trying to be what everybody else wants me to be but it just, I, I felt it. It was a level up of just being like, I'm going to really let you in to who I am and how I feel in a way that doesn't feel dangerous. Like I've processed everything, mm -hmm. but it feels like a risk. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time that I sent, uh, uh, sent something to, know, uh, to other people to get notes. And I was so welcoming of notes because... I always take notes, but it can feel uncomfortable to get notes because, you know, I want to be really right. good. And it's like, oh, but I was like, no, tell me how to make it better because this right. is a level up for me. So this is this is the story that I'm proudest of. And I love all I love all my children equally. But this is really my favorite. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Don't tell the other stories. But right. yeah, it, and it, it was just it was it was a wild experience. And I think that's part of this work. And I'm sure it's the same with podcasting where there's times where you're like, oh, I can feel that I am holding things back in a way that I don't want to. And then oh, when you go past, it, yeah. And then when you go past it, in a way, like, it's just like, oh, this is what things can be. It's yeah, beautiful. No. I, I definitely notice a lot of the times that like I hold back on things, but it's because 
I'm not ready to share something publicly mm-hmm. um, or I'm ready to share it publicly, but I'm not ready for the inevitable like backlash I will get for mm-hmm. being like, this is how things actually are. Mm-hmm. And I struggle with not feeling as authentic with that. Mm-hmm. But well, I also need to protect my peace and yes. like having a whole episode on dealing with certain parental issues yeah is not exactly like yeah people are not going to feel alone but i'm gonna get a phone call and i'm yes. really dealing with that phone call yes well i'm so you glad know? we're talking about so, that yeah because <laughs> you know? that's a thing i've been i've been thinking about and talking about a whole lot is balanced honesty mm-hmm. is it's hard exactly because you're more important than a story um yeah. and uh Maybe something can help someone, but it is also like, if it's going to hurt you, you don't want to be hurting yourself to help others. There's the expression, you know, you don't want to light yourself on fire to give, to keep others warm. And it's the same with this work is being vulnerable is important, but also you have to be realistic. So one, if you're not, yeah, if you're not ready, if you're not emotionally ready, if you haven't processed it, and I don't mean time-wise something could have been 20 years ago and it's not time to talk about it yet and it might never be i would say write about it but you don't have to put it out publicly you can work you know if the story if a story just helps you and it doesn't go out for anyone else that's so valid and so important and so beautiful exactly but if it is going to hurt you if it's going to damage your relationships you don't Oh, like that's, I think I, I often think of that as like, this is, here's my controversial thing, man, honesty, that right. idea of like, I'm just going to say that, say whatever I was, mm-hmm. I was listening to an interview with Mark Marin, and he was talking about going to an AA meeting and then talking about, I think he like had cheated on a partner or something mm-hmm. and he had told her and he was so proud of the honesty And then someone in the meeting came up to him afterwards and was like, that's not honesty if it's not considering the other person. Um, I'm paraphrasing. But just spewing stuff out is not the kind of vulnerable honesty that is healing and helpful. You can use honesty as a weapon. You can use it as like a cudgel. You can use it as an excuse. There's a lot of things you can do. You know, you, you read uh, celebrity tells, and I love them. But yeah, there's, too. yeah, but there's times where I'm like, is this I fair that to that person? stayed on the editor floor. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this chapter shouldn't have been in here. 100%. Um, and, yeah, it's that's the thing about the truth is I, I've been saying lately, what's the truthiest truth? And to me, sometimes the like truthiest truth is like a fictionalized something that gets that idea across. If it's going to hurt other people. And also sometimes if like the world's going to come at you, especially if you're a person with uh, different identities that like may already make you a target. It's just, I, you know, and it, it's the same with uh, people with racialized identities. Sometimes if they talk about something personal, that's all that anyone thinks about them about Mm -hmm. and then they're that person or people who write um i don't think it's as much of a thing anymore but you know some uh secret of theirs and they put it out there they write an article they make a hundred bucks it lives on the internet forever like these are the whisper app vaguely i i like where people keep, would just write their confessions yeah like, you really think that's actually anonymous because like yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it is i am a per, i'm a Do bit of really a luddite putting that out there because yes there are probably ways to track that exactly also uh i i truly believe that those kind of apps should have a few multiple choice questions so people aren't intoxicated or very tired when they yeah. send it uh, cause yeah, you could, you could really do some real harm with stuff like that. So the truth is like, the truth is complicated and being it's honest so and vulnerable. Yeah. It's that's the thing. Like, everybody's like, Oh, it's just the truth. I'm like, yeah. there's so many layers to it. Yes. It is there's your truth accurate. Talking about, or like, yeah. I, I'll talk about on other platforms, 
but when it comes to the podcast because yeah it's on a literal global platform mm-hmm. no yeah i'll mention it in my tiktok i'll mention it in my tiktok lives and i understand that's also a global platform mm-hmm. but like i have four thousand followers like yeah. it's not really going that far yeah. versus like something on here where it's like i said something and the internet's forever like yeah. a tiktok video i can delete i could yes. delete a podcast episode but also no yeah <laughs> like yes we're just, gonna, we're just gonna sit in our uh in our fuck-ups on this podcast because yes. there are some episodes that have not aged well that's very funny um, Yes, and listen, as someone is some... on for context. Yes. As someone who <laughs> has written a lot of relevant, but the people oh, exactly. that are, on are no longer. So it's like <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as somebody who has written comedy for a lot of years, definitely there's some stuff that I look back on. Especially stuff the thing about comedy is you're often and storytelling, heck any art form, you're revealing stuff about yourself. Like that's yeah, oh, just yeah. a fact that you have to deal with. Um and uh, I definitely had some material where I was like, bud, you knew you were queer. Like, you're clearly grappling with it in this comedy. Well, How did you not know? Yeah. Hindsight is twenty twenty. When you're When you're looking back and you're like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Like, when, like, my friggin', my bisexual awakening should have yeah. been when I was like, 10 watching mighty joe young and realizing that Charlize theron was literally like a goddess that's so funny and you know like my biggest influences were like i thought it was my my goth emo awakening yeah with, um let's see uh christina ricci as mm. wednesday adams yes in the adams family now it's family values and then the mm-hmm. hex girls yeah and then amy lee from evanescence that was all yeah. before i was 12 and i'm yeah. here, like that was my that was my emo awakening and I'm like, no, no, it wasn't like it yeah. was, but also like, that's very funny. I also like, and I think this is such a common queer thing is, uh, you remember the cooler one? Uh, cause like I haven't seen Mighty Joe Young. I'm sure it's fine. Um, uh, but like, I haven't heard it referenced, but all of those other ones, like everyone, you know, like C- Christina Ricci, uh, like I, it's, uh, like a lot of people owe her some money for like teaching them some things that you know i don't know all kinds of like therapy didn't where it was just like wait a second you know it is like what is this feeling yeah it's just like oh Mm -hmm. i like girls um Mm -hmm. yeah it's Mm -hmm. her natasha leo there's a couple of women who are apparently straight yawn um where i'm just like oh my god like the, the, the women and, uh, like, non-men that you have ushered into their truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you insist on being straight. Whatever. It's okay. Like, it's fine. I literally um, actually just saw a TikTok this morning before I hopped on here. And it was, mm-hmm. like, um, it was, it was, it had something to do with, it was tied in with, like, Tyler, the creators. Mm-hmm. Something. But it was, like... I'm an I'm an effing like homosexual, and it was mm. literally because it was like uh, me seeing the Hex Girls on TV for the first time, and I was yeah. like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, like my for you page is getting a little too specific. Like, great, yeah, I I still like sort of like men. Um, yeah, but some know, of them are fine. Over- yeah, <laughs> some of them are fine. Right. I literally, yeah. I'm I'm very much of the whole if like the. the your sexuality is not a choice specifically mm-hmm. because and I'm going to piss off all the men that listen to this, but like, I would not choose to be attracted to men. Mm-hmm. Just so I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I also like, find it very like, I funny. I appreciate all of you as people, but when yeah. it comes to dating you, I actually like consider just walking into traffic. Yeah. A lot. And it is also like, I find it very funny because I, I, spe- I, I like to read um especially reading stuff where it's just like oh everyone's talking about this thing i'm gonna figure out a way and uh men are like how dare you say these terrible things about men and yet they really like uh the that book that says you nag women and say bad things about them and you never assume that like 
I don't know. It's one, we're not saying it because we think you're great and want to sleep with you. But like, it's just that doesn't occur to you that it's just like, maybe I could just up my game or whatever. Yeah, maybe, to I could be the could guy. Do the thing she's been up my ass for for six months and maybe this will stop. 100%. And it's the other thing is because, you know, like there are some, you know, like I'm very like some of my best friends are men. But it is so funny with uh, certain like I. Uh, at least one guy I've dated uh, where I, I will say positive things about him. Like I've gotten him dates and not in a creepy way where like yeah. women will be like, you dated him. Was he okay? I'm like, Oh, he's great. It just didn't work out. Cause mostly I'm into women and yeah, you know, exactly. it is, I might have to get in touch with him. I think he owes me a cookie bouquet, uh, but it is like we women talk, you know, yeah, and it's just like, just do. be decent. It's not that hard. Exactly. Exactly. That being said, I also date women and we're complicated. So no, it's a weird place to be like, in. Like, I like, yeah, I don't like being attracted to men, but being attracted to women is also a fresh kind of hell because yeah. like, I'm way too scared to talk to them because yeah. they're intimidating as shit. Yeah. I know that. Because yeah. I can be an intimidating woman myself. So, like, having yeah. to talk to one and, you know, I'm just like, eh. Yeah. So, they're pretty you know, and just, smart and interesting and. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I. They look nice. Like. Oh. Exactly. I and them. that's and that's the other thing with women is because they actually are listening to you. Um, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's just like, oh no, you hear my bullshit, uh, which is mm -hmm. great in a lot of ways. But I, uh, it's I I uh, watched and I could only get through part of it. But I watched watched part of the Matt Reif special. Uh, because I didn't even watch it. I make, heard uh, excellent one choice thing about yeah, yeah I, excellent I, choice. Eh. Yeah, I watched I, it. I watched it my, partly because I'd heard so many bad things about it, and I only made it halfway through. Um, yeah, but he has I, a part. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're you're totally fine. Yeah, I just like I liked his crowd work. His crowd work is like great. But yeah, when you're when you're basically reusing like jokes that are literally older than I am. Like, yeah, your comedian gets some of the goddamn material. Yeah, like, probably that, older that than really both of us issue. combined. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't even the issue with the joke that he made. That, yeah, you know, everybody kind of came for him for. Yeah, it, and I'm not going to repeat it because I don't know it like verbatim, but it yeah. was in horrible taste. Yeah, and I it's guess just half do that a lot. Yeah, my thing is, is like do, like get like yeah find your own material yeah like, your crowd work is phenomenal dude mm -hmm. work with that yeah it's just he's it's very hack it's very it's it's a, have that be your first joke i was like really that's what you want to start with but the thing that like got me and uh i love comedy and i'm very picky uh, and so I was like, oh, you didn't do this act out right. Like, this part is lazy. Like, there was just all these things I had. Right. But there was one part uh, where he talks about, like, ladies with crystals. And it's 60% of your personality. And I live in the, like, like West Toronto. I like you have a personality, Matt. Well, the thing is, is I know a lot of crystal women. And it's but not 60%. Yeah. But like, the thing what? is. The thing is, it's not 60% of their personality. You just don't listen to anything they say unless right. it's something you can make fun of with your bros. And it was just, yeah, I was like, it's like the, you know, the cocktail party effect where yeah. you can be in a crowd and you stop hearing everything until someone says something like sex and then everyone like tunes in. Oh, yeah. But he's yeah. basically, probably women are talking to him about all kinds of stuff, and he's just hearing, rap, 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 rap. And then they say crystals, and then he starts listening, being like, what a stupid bitch. Like, it's like, I know a lot of yeah. crystal people. I'm queer. Like, this part of Toronto is very, like, you know, practically they'll ask your pronouns when you walk into a store. Like, it's just, it's very, right. very sweet, touchy feely, left wing, etc. And if I have not noticed that, sweetie, sweetie. Like, here's the thing. As somebody who is a crystal girly. Yeah. I like them. They're nice. They're pretty. They're great. Is yeah. Is it 60% of my personality? No. Do I make it uh, a solid 30% of my personality that I'm going to have a life-size amethyst geode yeah. in my house one day? Yeah. That sounds yeah. great. I'm just, I'd be too afraid I'd, I'd 
uh, have it knock over on me. That's pretty much but the see, only reason my, I don't have more. I'm not afraid of it knocking over. I know that one of my cats is going to be like, oh, scratch post. And I'm yeah. going to be like, I swear yeah. to God. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not going to rehome you, but I'm going to threaten to do it a lot. That's <laughs> very funny. Yes, which is very funny. <laughs> I find it funny when people are like, you can't, like, don't make that joke. I'm like, the cat doesn't understand. Like, Literally. the cat understands, like, food and uh i don't know its own name and that's about it and yeah, like literally they probably I, I just, could understand more they just choose not to i i just thought it was gonna sell my dog i literally like nine times like almost almost like once a week yeah i'm like i'm selling you to the circus yeah am i gonna do it no no no, no. i would literally she would sell me for a cheese it but <laughs> I would literally lay down on train tracks for that dog. Of course. Without even thinking about it. Of course. But, so like, or you would just I, like, you would sell it to the circus and then just follow the circus around being like, I yeah, regret. Yeah, kidnap her back. It's fine. Yeah. So like, you know, when people are like, oh, that makes it, you like, da, 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 da. shut up. Yeah. The, okay. the, the, know, the animal, the animal covered. doesn't They're understand. They're reactive dogs. Exactly. She triggers my ADHD sensory overload. Yeah. Like, was it the smartest decision on planet Earth to get her? No. But That's like a responsible funny. dog owner, I'm living with my slight mistakes because she's a really fucking cute mistake. Yes. And she's really snuggly. Yes. And yeah, she's reactive as shit and she barks a lot. Yeah. And I threatened to sell her to the circus. Yeah. But yeah. She's nice. Listen, living with like... a cute mistake, I think, is my parents' experience of my childhood. So <laughs> they've never said that to me. They've never said that to me. Um, sometimes, like, I know my parents love me, but sometimes I'm like, did you two really want kids? Like, did you? Yeah, my my parents I don't know, did. Yeah. I'm back and I'm like, was it just something you felt you should have done? <laughs> you actually want to. My parents definitely wanted kids. Well, my parents listen to this, so I can't wait for that phone call. That's <laughs> very funny. Um, but also, I I don't think that like anyone who has kids knows what they're getting into exactly because how not. can you uh well, so i think honestly out perfect and then yeah. you get the second one that literally crawled its way up from hell and i can it's say that funny. as the first one and having a younger sister that's very like, funny it's you yes know, i just so these people that are one and done i'm like smart people that have multiple kids i'm like because like i i babysit part-time yeah and i i love those kids to death but I like going home. Yeah, isn't <laughs> like, it great? I like being like, you know, it's been great. Um, they were actually wonderful today. Yeah. And I adore them, but I'm going yeah. home. I'm because such I a good. Way too many questions today. Yeah, I'm such a good aunt. I'm such a good I, aunt. I know. I love like literally being an aunt. Yeah. Is, if you want to talk about crystals being sixty percent of my personality, yeah. Ask me about being an aunt because yeah. that is literally a hundred and fifty four point three percent of my personality. Yeah. And I will not be taking any questions about that math. I've care. had I've had various people who don't know me like I'm showing a cute video of a little kid mm -hmm. they're like oh is that your daughter I'm like no that's my niece <laughs> want to see the I, 50 videos I have on my phone of her yeah no my nieces and my nephews are literally my entire fucking existence they're so they're so cute they're and it amazing. is and I get to like she does my hair and then I get like get to go home and not have to like pull cheerios out of it um you know and have her like cheerios, so. scream and you know and she's wonderful but she's also a human child so you know yeah. she just yeah. gets wild at times but yeah it is it it's i i i do think and i will say this for anyone thinking of having kids uh, i'm pretty all right but i'm definitely i you know wasn't always an easy child and uh, there wasn't the information that there is now about like mental health and a lot of different stuff. So mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I think back some, sometimes with my parents of being like, I must've been really complicated where it just like, what am, why is she like this? Why is she doing this? Why is she having an anxiety spiral? Um, because we were at the science center and she like was called up to like be part of the experiment and felt like she didn't do it right and so now she's crying like that must have been a lot the red flags so you're like literally telling me these things and i'm just like mentally checking off the boxes of what yeah. you already told me i'm like mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i do feel like places like the science center and like you know where it's like family museum day there should maybe be people that have like a brochure that's like your child might be neurodiverse literally here's some I, help at this point 
at this point, parents, just because like it is coming out with a lot of so a lot of so many. Love it. A lot of so many. English I love is it. Hard. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so many people are coming out as late diagnosis. Yeah. As a child-free woman, my yeah. parenting advice to you: assume they're neurodivergent unless otherwise noted. Yeah. Like just just do it because yeah. even neurotypical people can have sensory issues. Mm-hmm. They just and also. Can. Those skills are just like the tools that I've been given. There's friends of mine uh, who are like, well, I, I, you know, they're like, well, what a bunch of the stuff you're saying makes sense. So I took a test, but I didn't like, I didn't uh, rate at a very high level, but like a lot of that stuff makes sense. I'm like, just use the tools, bud. Like you don't have to be neurodiverse. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't have to be a diagnosis thing. and you don't, it doesn't have to be your thing to have some of the tools work for you. Yeah, because you can have sensory processing disorder and not yeah. have ADHD or, yeah. or be on the spectrum. Exactly. There is such a thing. Exactly. It's so, yeah. It's not very common, mm-hmm. but it's a thing. Exactly. So, exactly. So like men who know. listen, it's not very common, but it's a thing. <gasps> Bird! Burn. By the way, Heather, Heather didn't say that. So if you're a man listening to this, that's on Aaron Rodgers and not the oh football player. God. No, go after the football player. Go yeah, after the football player because that would be player. hilarious. Where oh he's like, God. what? I've said things that are anti-man? What? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But okay. So this has gone off the rails and I love it. <laughs> I'm here for it. But how do we bring, how does somebody bring um, storytelling into like their, somebody that wants to get into it? How do yes. they start? Well, I would say there's a lot of like different books and that sort of stuff out there that can mm-hmm. give you a guide on how to start. Because I'm a person, uh, I really want there to be rules. Autistic. Uh, I really want there to be rules. Structure. So exactly. Uh, there's a lot of great books out there. Uh, uh, Margot Lightman has one that I really enjoy. If you Google the moth, there's a lot of different things. Uh, there's a man, Matthew Dix, who wrote the foreword for uh, our second collection. He has a book. Uh, another thing is start listening to stories, going to storytelling shows, because one of the greatest things is to like see other people, see what they do. What do you like? What would you do differently? And then a lot of the shows you can go and just be like, I would like to do this. I haven't done this before. A lot of them to most of them will have someone sit down with you, ask you questions, find a story uh, and, and shape it with you. So that's one of the things that I love about this art form is it is very welcoming. Um, mm-hmm. at least in my experience, it's very right. welcoming people. We want you to be part of it. It like a friend of mine once was like, she's like, everyone seems so nice to the point where she's like, this isn't a cult, right? I'm like, no, 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 no. one's going to try to take <laughs> anybody. Summer over here. Exactly. But it was, she was like, everyone was like, can I help you? Or like, whatever. Um, she's another comedian, so we're not used to people being friendly. Uh, sorry, comedians, but every, any comedian who's listening to this, even if they're mad, knows that I'm not lying. So there's, (laughs) there's wonderful, friendly, kind people out there, uh, in comedy, but that's not usually the vibe necessarily. But anyways, um, one of the things, this is going to sound a little, uh, like obvious, but just start doing it start writing all you really need for a story is a beginning middle and end and some change and for your listeners i'm gonna uh, have some free worksheets to help them get started um because one i you know i i i'm so passionate about this i want everyone to do it and two the way i do it has been really helpful for a lot of clients at various stages and people who don't usually work this way. So I, I worked for a national engineering month for two years, uh, doing storytelling stuff with them. And I was told again and again by engineers and technologists, this is not how we talk. This is completely different. This is very scary. Uh, and so sort of step by step processes can be very helpful if you're new to this. So I'm going to, I'm going to give some people some of those as well. Uh, because yeah, just give it a try. What the heck? Why not? Well, shit, this has been so much fun. Ah, ditto. I've had a great time. (laughs) 
I've had a great time. As great a time as I've had dating uh, women and not men. Burn. Sorry, I can't. Rule of threes. <laughs> Rule of threes. It's still really baked oh into my, my brain. God. Well, Erin, thank you so much for ha- for coming on. And this is this has been a blast. Thank you so much. If I can say one last thing before I go. Yeah. Uh, so I, I mentioned before a collection uh, that my a friend of mine and I, we have a collective that uh, put it together. A collective mm-hmm. collection. Um, it, the, the newest and final one comes out April 17th, uh, and all the money goes to Planned Parenthood, which uh, is really important to me and to, to, to Jeremy. Uh, especially here. Yeah, especially, but like especially also, here. I get worried about Canada as well. And so all the money will yeah, go to Planned Parenthood. It here and it did, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who thought Roe v. Wade? Uh, like that was just, oh, of course. <laughs> That was one of the things where I was always, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, America, like all these amazing things. And there's still a lot of amazing things about America. Oh, and, but one of the things was Roe v. Wade just being felt feeling like an institution for as long as I was aware that that was a thing. And then mm-hmm. to hear it go. So uh, I, I love I love the collection. Uh, I love all of them. But this uh, collection is our biggest yet. Uh, all the money goes to Planned Parenthood. You're going to hear or read a lot of wonderful stories. Some will make you laugh. Some will make you cry. Some might make you do both at once. And you might do a thing like me where you touch your face and go, am I crying? Is this what emotions are? I know. Uh, and uh, and the money goes to Planned Parenthood. Uh, we have storytellers from across North America and around the world um, and also one of the things I hope is that people will read this collection and go, why don't I do this? Because yeah, tell your stories, share your stories, but also this all came out because I thought, you know, I would really like to put this together and we learned as we went. So exactly. why not do that? Why not, you know, be like Heather and do a podcast, be like me and put out a storytelling collection. DIY is so powerful. Um, and you can prove that to yourself by buying a copy of my book. <laughs> there you go. Wasn't right. that cute? Ended, ended, uh, ended on a weird note. Anyways. Hey, we love a weird note. Fantastic. So, Aaron, thank you again so thank much. Thank you so much. This was wonderful.